All right. Well, I've had more than one person ask me about my gaming setup here, so I figured I would walk through it. And I kind of figured I'd use this as kind of a jumping off point to uh, follow up this video with some stuff, uh, some content about my other setups, including my uh, very complicated audio setup, but it works pretty good um, for not having a bunch of professional like switchboards and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to, this is going to have my full face on it right now because I want to just show off the actual keypad itself. So this is what everyone's mostly curious about. So I apologize, my desk is a bit dusty. It's been a bit since I've I've dusted it. Let's see, oh, I gotta, hold on one second here. I gotta pull the cord out of the little cord organizer. So I have some more leeway. Oh, come on. It's just Velcro, come on, there we go. All right, so here's my, my monitor with the cord in front of it, but all right. So I got the uh, the Razer Huntsman Analog V2. I really like the keyboard. The only issue I have is an issue that's actually with the Razer software. If I, the uh, keys will get stuck, like basically the key up event won't fire. And I have figured out this is, spans all my Razer devices except for mice. All the keypads, like this guy, and all the keyboards all seem to have this issue. It's funny how much more visible stiff is on camera. There's some cat hair and some dust. It's really not that bad, but on camera it looks so much grainier. But anyway, um, so though I figured out though that since I don't really need to customize the keyboard, that I can just turn off Synapse, which uh, we'll, I'll show you guys Synapse in a little bit, um, and then that fixes it. I don't have any issues with the keys getting stuck if Synapse is off, and that, that goes for all devices. Problem with this guy is it depends on Synapse because it's not a keyboard. It doesn't have default functionality. You press those buttons and they do nothing by default. Uh, hold on, let me uh, let me put Discord on Do Not Disturb just so it's not being annoying while we're recording here. Okay, so I wanted to go over my keypad. That's going to be the main focus of this video here. Um, and so really, what I wanted to do is just kind of show it off a little bit. Um, again, I need to clean it. I clean this stuff pretty regularly, so, so apologies for not taking the time to do that before this video. Um, uh, basically, it's got a soft touchpad here for the palm, and that works great. The thumb rests on this joystick. It's kind of a, a clicky joystick. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but uh, it's because you're actually pushing buttons. So it's not an actual analog joystick, so that's probably the only downside, but it's still way better than WASD, in my opinion. Um, okay, and then you got all these buttons up here. Now this is, how you rest your hand on this thing is just a matter of preference. I started off like this. I made the third row my home row, kind of like this. And it's basically, I put rest my four fingers on here just like a home row. And I think that's intended to be the home row because this key right here uh, has a little nub on it, just like the home row on your keyboard does for your index finger. And so I think that was intended to be I kind of, I think you kind of put WASD right here. W A S D is kind of how they want you to use it, like by default. Um, and I think actually even in the software that might be the default key mappings. I don't know. I don't care though because I like to customize the hell out of this thing. And that's the whole reason I got it in the first place. There's a little scroll wheel here, um, which comes in handy sometimes, but I very rarely end up mapping that to anything. Um, but it turns out I have large hands, so my comfortable home row is this row here. And that makes things a lot easier. And at first it's like, oh my gosh, where do I map everything and all that kind of stuff. But you kind of get used to it. So every game, pretty much every single game except for like World of Warcraft, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit towards the end of the video here, uh, is this is jump. I, my index finger is my jump key always. I've gotten really used to it. It's comfortable. And this one is the action key. F, E, like they tend to change it from game to game, but for me, I always map it to that key. So it's always the same for me. The interact action key uh, in Halo, it's, uh, I think it's E to get into like the Warthog and stuff, uh, open doors, whatever key that is in, what, in the game I'm playing, that's what I'm mapping that to. This one, I always map to shift, it's sprint. So I'm always hitting my, my third finger here, um, my ring finger, I'm always using that one to run. And then lastly, the pinky finger, I'm almost always making the crouch finger. So um, these will change slightly based on game set and experience, but 
Uh, that's kind of my standard layout. The, this key up here is always reload, so I always go up with my index finger one to reload, and then down one is my ultimate, which for a long time has worked out great, but for some reason, uh, lately, I don't know if I've just changed my posture with my hand or whatever, I keep accidentally hitting it, so I've been contemplating moving it somewhere else. I tried moving it to one of these side buttons here, uh, but taking my thumb off the th thumbstick to cast my ultimate turned out to be a detriment. Um, and then the other keys are kind of just whatever. So especially these keys down here, they tend to be just game specific stuff. And then and these ones all the way down here too. Um, and then also the one to off to the left with my, when I go to the left one with my pinky, um, that seems to be one of the primary ones I map to something specific in the game. Um, these keys up here tend to usually be one through four. So one, two, three, four. And the reason I do that is because I can quickly switch between weapons in most games. And I kind of think of it as counting from right to left because of just the way my left hand sits on this thing. And I like being this finger being more primary for switching between like a couple primary weapons, these two fingers here, rather than my pinky being my go-to all the time for weapon number one. Um, so like weapon number one, and uh, excuse me, weapon number like f three and four tend to be like the weapons I use, you know, in, uh, depending on the game. The weapons I use less often, so I'm like, well, let's use the weaker fingers for those. <clears throat> and this has just taken a lot of trial and error, some practice, that kind of stuff, to to really just get down how I like to use this thing. But that's that's how I do it. It's basically just preference where you want to rest your your hand on this thing. I started off here, realized my hand was cramping up, and then found out this was way more comfortable. It seems like a minor difference until you're playing for a long time, um, and then like having my hand kind of curled like this onto these keys after a while I was like not comfortable at all um i had the razor orb weaver chroma before this and uh while it's older and it uses it does this newer razor software doesn't even support it um you have to use the old razor software which is fine it just means you have to use two programs if you have any other newer razor products you have to run both synapse 2.0 and synapse 3.0 in order to handle the key mappings, but that wasn't a big deal. But basically the Orb Weaver Chroma, I think it had adjustable everything. Like you could adjust how far out that the uh, palm pad was, how far out this whole side piece was and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of nice. Um, but this one's more comfortable. Um, the the Ray Orb Weaver had this issue. Why is it? Come on, focus, focus. Come on camera. What's going on here? There we go. Okay, just a lot of blacks, I guess. Anyway, we're almost done with this part anyway. Uh, but this this thing here is super soft and nice. The Orb Weaver Chroma had like a, a rubber thing on there that just peeled off after a while. And I even expected it to peel off because I watched a video of someone using it saying, yeah, I have some super glue on hand for when this eventually peels off. And sure enough, it did. And I was prepared for it. So, But this is the Tartarus Pro, the Razer Tartarus Pro. I really like it. It has the analog keys, so they don't click. They don't make snappy clicky sounds. Um, they Razor Tartarus V2 and V1, um, those are good as well, but they are definitely very clicky. Um, these keys can actually be pushed like halfway in, they have pressure sensitivity, so you can assign multiple functions to them based on the percentage of how far they're pushed in, that kind of stuff. Same with the Razor Huntsman Analog V2, uh, these keys also have that, that, uh, analog functionality so that's kind of cool um and then oh i should show off the hold on one second here i forgot i have this i just almost never use it lately because i'm almost always just gaming but this just rests right up under the keyboard and then it's got a little light bar on it but it's a nice little palm rest that came with it so i like that and it doesn't snap or anything it just mag it's a magnet so you just push it right up against it and then it's stuck to the keyboard and you can just pull it off so that's kind of cool. All right, let's see. Let's put all this back up on the monitor here. All right. Oh, come on, come on. Okay. All right, let's flip over to my other scene. We're going to get some inception here. Sorry about that, because you're looking at the program I'm using to record, which is showing a preview of the recording. So it's doing that mirror effect. Uh, let's go ahead and minimize that. And we'll look at this for now. Um, okay, so this is the software I use. This is called Synapse. It's running down here in my task tray. You probably can't see that because of my camera in front of it. 
Yeah, so actually, why don't we just turn off the camera for a minute so I don't have to worry about what it's in the way of. Uh, okay, so right down here on the bottom right of my screen, I can just hit this and I can change the profile on my keypad, the Tartarus Pro. And I can change it to whatever game I want. So by default, let me go over to the keypad because the, the mouse is sim you know similar. You can map buttons on the mouse and we'll get there, but that's, you know, that's pretty straightforward. A lot of people are used to that. The keypad basically functions the same way. Um, these are all default. That's why all the buttons are just uh, um, their default color. They change as you as you map them. So if I change this to be uh, something else, we'll put like a different key there. It'll turn green, showing that it's been modified. And I can just set it back to default if I need to. There you go. And then uh, there's a little green outline if you have one highlighted so you know which one you're modifying. Uh, basically, I set up a good default. By default, um, this, oh yeah, I was right, WASD is right here. They kind of intend you to use that by default, I guess. This one has the little nub on it. But I tend to leave this as my home row. This is where my fingers rest. Um, and so I map everything here. In fact, we'll, we'll just go ahead and modify my, my default. I haven't taken the time to do that here. But my default stuff that almost always is the same is this one is space bar, because space bars usually always jump. This one is E, so that's fine, but I am going to just change it to E manually just so it shows green. So I can show, oh yeah, that's a key I actually cared to modify even though their default was actually acceptable. This one I almost always map to shift, like we said when I was looking at the keypad. Shift is usually run, and then control is usually crouch, but that's often uh, like C or something instead. But we'll just put control for now. And this is the default profile I intend to branch off of. So I'll go to like duplicate here and create a new profile and start branching off of there. Um, this, these are alt by default, but actually I usually like this one to be tab. That's where I usually want to, you know, I want to press this button down here with my thumb to see the game score and stuff like that. So we'll make that tab. I already had these modified the uh, joystick directions to WASD. And so that's that's good. That's that's basically why I had the default profile was mostly for this because for some reason, the joystick is not mapped to WASD by default. Probably since they expect you to use these keys by default. So you don't have to use the joystick for movement. You can use it for other things. I think it's got some sort of analog mode that I don't fully understand here. How you can set it up to m imitate an analog joystick. Um, I've never had a game really recognize it when I map it that way, so I don't know. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, I don't usually, because like ultimates and stuff like that, it's like, yes, I have some regular stuff. Oh, well, this one should be R. It's almost always R for reload, so let me do that. And then I'll actually just run these back. So by default, they're one, two, three, four. But like I said, I kind of like my fingers going the other way from strongest finger to weakest finger. So I will just map these in reverse. So we'll do one for that one, two for that one, three for that one, and four for that one. There we go. Okay, and the rest we'll just leave empty, meaning, hey, I don't know what I want to do with these keys until I'm in a specific game, so I'll just leave them unmapped, and then uh, we'll uh, just clone this profile, create the game profile, and then we'll map these more specifically to whatever they are in the game. Okay, so that's that's how you configure this keypad. Now I wanted to go over real quick kind of how I got to this point, because it's an interesting journey and why I swear by these keypad things uh, with the joysticks. Uh, originally, my, so my favorite one I've ever used, by the way, was the Logitech G13. That thing was a dream and the joystick was a truly analog joystick. So that thing was awesome, but they discontinued it. I owned like three of them because every time anything would go wrong with it, I'd be like, oh, I want another one of these. It was awesome. Um, and then they got rid of it. They stopped manufacturing it. And Razer is the only one that really makes a competent one that I feel like um, works decently. So um, that's where I'm at now. And this does still have the issue where occasionally a key will get stuck uh, and it will start repeating itself like, uh, for w, A, S, or D is the most common because you're hitting those the most and one of them will get stuck and you have to hit the key again to stop it. It's basically like the key up event doesn't register and so it thinks you're holding down the key and then it doesn't get the up event um, in the operating system. When Synapse is running, this program, when this, this program here is running, oh shit, did it just freeze on me? That would happen while I'm trying to record, wouldn't it? 
it totally just crashed. <sighs> what a good video this is going, turning out to be. This doesn't happen, <laughs> by the way, very often. I mean, once in a while. But, of course, it has to happen now while I'm recording. So, give me a moment here. Fine. I don't want to hit it more than once, or else it'll try to launch multiple processes. It just takes forever. Don't do this to me. Come on. There we go. Finally. Okay. All right. Um, so this program here, Synapse, when it is running, it basically acts as a middleman for key interception. So it will take all the keys that, sorry, I have a bunch of shit on my desktop, but uh, I have, uh, it'll, ta it'll take all the keys that you press on your devices and then it will basically, you know, do whatever processing it needs to. It'll figure out what they're mapped to and that, and then it will send the proper keystrokes to the operating system. There's a bug for some reason that when this is running, it will cause those that key up event to not make it to the operating system all the time. I'm not sure if this program itself misses the key up event or if it just misses retransmitting the key up event to the operating system uh, and then obviously onward to any games or whatever you've got going on there. Um, but it, it happens. If you close Synapse, it doesn't happen at all. The problem is, is the keypad doesn't work at all without Synapse because it's entirely dependent on your custom key mappings. Whereas my keyboard, you see I haven't customized anything because the keyboard by default works the way you expect a keyboard to work. Um, and that's true even without Synapse running. So when I'm just working, I actually turn Synapse off. Um, so that's one, one word of warning. It doesn't happen so often that it's broken, but... Like, you know, maybe once a day it'll happen and it's like, ah, and like, it's definitely happened a couple times where I've run off a cliff because I'm strafing with D and it, I'm not long, no longer pressing D uh, on the joystick here, but it still thinks I am. And so before I could figure out that I need to press D to, to register that key up, of, uh, fresh key up event. I end up strafing off the side of a cliff or running out into battle or and getting killed by a bunch of people or, you know, stuff like that. So just be wary of that. All right. So what I wanted to do here was actually load Overwatch. I don't I thought I had Overwatch open already, but maybe I died. Oh, no, that's right. I shrunk my screen resolution and I didn't want to do that with the game open because games freak out when I do that. It's best to record on 1080p still. It seems to blow up nicely on bigger screens so you can see everything. If I record on my full widescreen 2K monitor, it uh, looks kind of trash. Okay, so I used to play a ton of Overwatch on console, and this was my journey. So I realized, let me get my controller here and turn that on. Oh, something is going on with the resolution in here. Let me fix that. Options. Uh, video. Yeah, here we go. We want this to be 1920 by 1080. Oh, and then you have, so dumb, you have to manually adjust the aspect ratio. Okay. All right. So, um, let me actually put these into, well, I actually, well, let's not worry about the profiles there because I'm going to use the controller first. Okay. So I'm on the controller, and this is when I back when I used to play on Xbox, and I'm pressing A right now, and that's swapping my my speed and my healing. And the trigger is my jump button, and there's a reason for that. Um, I'm sure you, if you've played Halo and stuff, you've probably seen that they always have controller layouts that are bumper jumper. Um, and the reason people like that layout uh, is because having jump on the A key on the A button on the controller means that my thumb has to move from the joy right joystick where I'm moving my camera to the button to jump. So I have to turn around, stop, jump, turn around, stop, jump. That's how I'd have to do it with the default mapping. But with left trigger, I can be jumping and moving my feet with the left joystick and my camera with the right joystick. And the reason I, I'm on Lucio, because I don't even play Lucio that much, but I realized that with this mapping, you can play Lucio so well because you can wall slide and look around at the same time and keep jumping to continue wall sliding. And I don't even have to look back at the wall I'm sliding on. And so I can just be aiming at people while I'm sliding along. 
just like that. And it's awesome. I really like the feel of it. But the problem is, is I had ended up falling in love with PC. And so right now I'm looking around with this right joystick, which works fine, you know. But like, you know, to aim at the spot, kind of have to get it, there you go, just right. I used to play on it with a pretty sense, pretty uh, high sensitivity. I'm not used to that anymore for aiming, so. But that's the joystick, okay? So I thought, well, okay, let me go to PC now. And let me go out to Synapse here, and I'll go to Mouse and change this to my Overwatch profile. Uh, let's see here, Overwatch. There we go. Okay, and V is Melee. That's really all it changed is I just now have Melee on here. I thought my mouse is not... The button mappings are not working. I just am realizing. Let's... Hmm. Why are you not working, maps? I may have to kill Synapse, actually. Exit Synapse and restart it. I'm not sure why it crashed earlier, but... It did something. Sorry, guys. Have some patience with me here. I'll try and edit this video so it's not so annoying. Okay. 98% and charging. I haven't even unplugged it. Why is it at 98%? Anyway, is it working now? There we go. Okay, these buttons are working. So I got on PC and I'm like, oh man, I really love aiming with a mouse. Boom, boom, boom. Like I just, I can snap my mouse wherever I want it and I really like that. But then I'm over here on the keyboard with WASD and I'm like, man, my feet are so hard to, it's so hard to keep your feet on the wall with four keys. And I'm like, man, I miss how easy it was to just point the joystick toward the direction I know the wall is in, no matter what I'm facing with the camera. And so I thought, okay, well here, let's see if I can, uh, now I'm using the controller, by the way, you'll notice the inputs, see how they, bottom right down here, they change based on what input I'm using. So look at the, look at the bottom, the three abilities on the bottom right of my screen, you see they say A, R, B, L, B. As soon as I touch the mouse, shift, E, right click, left joystick on the controller that so but they switch so fast that i can use them both now look watch them flicker because i'm using both and so i'm i'm uh jumping with the left trigger on the joystick i'm riding the wall with the left trigger but i'm aiming with the mouse this is the only game this works in <laughs> and it's kind of jittery because it's constantly changing the ui up and stuff um and so but i thought man this would be so cool if i could do this without the jankiness of it and so then I remembered seeing those keypads and things online. And so I thought, okay, let's let's try that out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my controller off here. I have to hold down the middle button, which opens up this menu. So hold on one second. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to get the keypad and the mouse out. That's all I have. And I push my keyboard all the way back to the back of my desk. So I have plenty of room here for mouse movement. Um, cause I'm a, I'm an arm turner, at least I'm trying to be based on tutorial videos I've been watching on how to be the best mouse aimer. And I'm going to show you something really cool about the mouse aiming in a minute too, but look at this. I'm able to jump with my left, uh, index finger where on that jump button that I mapped and I can aim wherever I want and I can use the joystick to, to wall ride. And this makes playing Lucio... The annoying Lucio, you know, the one that's hopping around the payload and sliding everywhere and no one can ever hit him or kill him. And he holds the payload in place while his entire team respawns and comes back to back him up. Yeah, that's that's how you play annoying Lucio, <laughs> at least for me, with this awesome setup I have now. And then I have shift mapped on the keypad there. Sh shift for Lucio is to switch your, uh, your mode, healing or, or speed boost. And then I've got the uh, E ability mapped there. That one is, of course, his uh, turn it up, increased healing or increased speed for a minute there. And then that's it. I've got, uh, I think, yeah, control is crouch here. Um, if I shoot some, I can move my index finger up one, hit R, reload. And yeah, so basically I have the best of both worlds because I missed movement with the joystick, but I really like aiming with the mouse. I like controlling my camera with the mouse. There's just no comparison, which I think most PC enthusiasts uh, would agree that you just there's no substitute for aiming with a mouse. It's too so precise. And then of course I have my ultimate mapped just below my index finger. 
or not. <laughs> oh, did I not? Did I change it by accident? Let me look at the key mapping. Oh yeah, we're still in default mode, my bad. So look at how well default worked though. Just because I already had these keys mapped the way I tend to use them in most games. Um, so let's go to Overwatch mode. That's that's my actual profile there. And I deliberately disabled some of these because their default one uh, key mappings can kind of be annoying sometimes. Um, and so now, that's right. Um, I meant to swap these actually. I want this to be control, I want to be F. There we go. Perfect. So F is like the ability like to go through teleporters and stuff like that. Uh, or I think like on Torbjorn, you can cancel the turret he has out by pressing F. That kind of stuff. So I don't want to accidentally hit that on my pinky. So I move that to the one just to the left of my pinky. Um, but yeah, so now I can hit my ultimate. Right there. That button that I sometimes accidentally hit. I'm not sure if I should move the key or just keep it because I'm used to it. And then uh, just get used to making sure my... Um, posture, my hand posture is correct because I do tend to play more so in a position that I, you know, is more comfortable on my hand um, and it's supposedly not going to cause more long term issues. So I'm trying to be cognizant of that. But as I'm playing, I kind of forget. My hand gets lazy, slides down the pad a little bit. And then I'm accidentally rubbing that key below the jump button. And I've definitely accidentally thrown my ferro rockets out there without meaning to. But yeah, Lucio, for whatever reason, he's the character that made me like think about all this stuff in a way I hadn't before. And it's so much easier to... I can, I can glide around these buildings without looking at the walls. And it's just like I kind of have just this innate sense of where I'm at. Because I can move with the joystick and it makes it so much easier. It's, it's really intuitive for some reason. Okay. Let's go ahead and look back at Synapse a little bit because there's one other thing I want to talk about while we're here. Uh, it's kind of not the reason I started this video, but, you know, might as well show it off since it's sort of relevant. This is the Razer Basilisk mouse. Um, I think it's there's like two or three different versions of it. I think this is the Basilisk Ultimate. Um, I think it just has slightly better uh, DPI. But basically, so I go and I lower the sensitivity all the way down to 800. And then I go in game and I, my, my rule of thumb is for sen the in game sensitivity. So I just always leave it at 800 in Razer most, for most games. And then for in game sensitivity, I figure out what to adjust it to by taking my mouse over to the left. Um, so I'm just moving it like, so let's see, I'm putting it out in front of me where it's comfortable. And then I'm moving it over to the left about a foot maybe, or half a foot, probably more like half a foot. And then I'm dragging it all the way to a half a foot to the right of where my mouse is normally comfortable. Okay, that's actually too sensitive. For me, I did a, I did more than 180 degrees. I want that one sweep to be a full 180 degrees so that I can just go swipe and then it's 180 degrees. It's not too bad. It's a little over, over sensitive here. So what I would probably do is adjust it. And it might be because of my resolution changes or something. I don't know. But we'll adjust it in here for now. Uh, let's try four. And so let's do 180 degrees sweep. There we go. That's a lot better. And so now I can go just flip 180 degrees by moving my whole arm on my desk. Um, and so that's that's kind of cool. Um, uh, oh, but the thing I wanted to show is that the Razer Basilisk has this cool thing on the side of it. Uh, boy, you can't really see it on this thing here. Let's just find a picture of it. Let's see, Razer Basilisk um, Ultimate. We'll just find a picture. I could just get the camera out, but it's kind of a pain. Here we go, here's a good picture. This thing right here, uh, this little like metal tab that's poking out, the lever, that's the sensitivity clutch. And this thing is awesome. You can take it off if it bothers you, but I really like it. And I like it's what it's default mapped to. You can, it's any, it's like a button. You can map it to anything you want, but I can map it. Um, I'll show you in the settings real fast. I have it mapped to lower my DPI sensitivity by half to 400. And so when I'm trying to aim in here, let's get a different hero. Uh, we'll do uh, Widowmaker. Okay. So when I'm wanting to aim in, 
you know, sometimes it can be a little difficult, especially for far away targets. It's like, oh, wow, just the tiniest movements. Even with the fact that I have my sensitivity set so low and everything, and I have to do full big arm sweeps to do a 180, a far away target, the tiniest movements just move so far away from their head. So tracking their head becomes a little more difficult um, at, at range. And when you're a sniper, obviously, at range matters. So instead, I can just hold that clutch, and now my movements are less pronounced. And so it's way easier to track someone at range when I just hold this button. It took some getting used to, and I'm actually still really getting used to that. But when, I, when I'm in the zone and I'm like, for whatever reason, it's, uh, it's clicking with me, it's awesome. So it's like, I'll stay, I'll, I'll not press the button just to get within the general vicinity, and then I'll hold it down, and then I can focus in with a slower... I can make more pronounced movements with the mouse, and then they're more smooth and subtle movements uh, in the game. But I don't want that normally, because that would be sluggish as hell if I had to turn like this all the time, normally. And I'm moving whole big arm sweeps right here, and it's like, it's all slow, because I'm holding the clutch. As soon as I let it go, though, back to normal, I can move around as I want. And then I can focus in on their head, just like that. Okay, so I'm, I'm here, get in the range, slow down, boom. Just like that. So as soon as I get within the range of who I want to shoot, I hold the clutch, and then I try to get that headshot. Obviously with the bots, it's a little bit easier. But, yeah, so that's, that's my setup. Um, pretty straightforward. I don't mind using the keyboard, and you do get used to the WASD, but holy crap, once you get used to using a joystick for movement and a mouse for aiming... It is real hard <laughs> to, to, to give that up. I, when I got this new Razer Huntsman analog keyboard, I was like, ooh, I want to try that out. Maybe maybe I will end up liking the keyboard again over the uh, keypad. And uh, while it definitely has you know some things I do like about it, I mean, I do like not having to take the time to map the keypad in the beginning of a game. But I've done it so much now that mapping the keypad is really easy. So what I do is when I start a new game, I first start with the keyboard because it's just easiest. Uh, you know, you're, it does the little tutorials in the beginning of the game or whatever. Oh, press this to do that, and it's right there on the keyboard. Or you know, nothing has to be mapped. So I just press the button. It says, and then I kind of build just a little bit of a of a memory of what keys do what, and then that way I already have kind of like a baseline. Like maybe I'll do one whole level of a of a single player RPG just with the keyboard, and then I'll pause and I'll take a break and I'll come out to the keypad here. And I'll go to my default profile and create a branch off of it. I'll duplicate it, basically. And then I'll start changing the keys. And I already kind of know what keys I want because I've gotten used to them. And then if I need to, though, I'll kind of alt-tab back and forth. I'll go to controls. And then I'll come down to the key bindings. And I'll just kind of alt-tab back and forth like this as I map the keys, making sure I'm mapping all the keys that I want. So... Yeah, that is. it does take a little bit of setup. And at first, it might seem like, oh my god, it takes forever. But once you have played, like, once you've gotten used to the keypad and where you like things to be, and you've played a few games, creating new profiles is easy. And most of the time, games, they've, they you start to realize that games adopt very similar control schemas uh, just to make it easy for you, too. Um, and so that's kind of nice. No one can hide from my uh, I think that's it. I think we'll call this video uh, done for now. Uh, I'm hopefully I'll edit, be able to edit out the parts where uh, where Synapse crashed there. Uh, but thanks for watching. Bye.